What's up guys, I'm Sunshine, owner of Arctic Sun, and today we got to paint. Drop the paintbrush. Actually, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, let's go. What's up y'all, today I'll be showing you how to paint this beautiful women empowerment piece here in acrylic paint for like a at home paint and sip painting with a twist type vibe. So let's jump right in. For supplies, I'll be using my, you know, my personal Arctic Sun paint and sip kit, you feel me? Available on my website at arcticsun.com, which includes a pre-drawn canvas, all of the paint you'll need in these cute little containers, two brushes, a medium-sized brush, a small brush, a reference photo, and your own YouTube tutorial. That's me. The drawing is also done in pencil so that if you want to change any aspect of your picture, if you want to, um, for example, if you don't want her hair to be in this cute little updo that I got going on in my picture, you can erase it, put some long straight hair going down her back or whatever you want to do. Also, each kit includes a little paint, paint little strip for any natural skin or hair color. So if you want her to be a redhead, brown hair, black hair, any complexion from light to dark, skin tone, we got it in the paint and sip kit. So you don't have to worry about going out to the store. The only other supplies you'll need that are not included in the kit is a cup of water because water cannot be transported easily in the mail, paper towels, and whatever you're going to be sipping on. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Scandalous. And if you don't have a kit, I guess that's okay. You should get one. However, you can still follow along. So let's get started. So we're going to start with phase one, the base coats or painting your first layers. On this picture, I'm going to call this the outer background, this the middle background, and this area right around her hair, the inner background. So outer, middle, inner. We're going to paint the outer background base coat first. So open up your peach color and your brown. So I'm using my art palette to mix my paint on and my medium sized brush. So scoop out a big old scoop of this peach color and then scoop out a little bit of brown. Not much, just a little bit. And mix those two colors together. This is going to be the base coat for our outer background. So spread this with your medium sized brush, cover your background completely, your outer background completely with this color. If you run out of the color like I'm probably about to shortly, just make more of it. So in acrylic painting you always are going to start with your base coats. Acrylic paint is a paint that you have to paint in layers. So you always need to have your base coat first and then you let it dry, which is super, super important. In acrylic paint, you always have to let your layers dry before adding another layer of paint on top of it. Um, and then after your layer dries, then you can continue painting. But you also typically want to work from the background to the foreground. Start with the area that's the farthest away and then work your way up. Arctic Sun tip for you. So I'm running out of this color, so I'm about to take another big scoop of the peach and a little bit of brown to make more of this background color. If it's not the exact same shade, it is 100% okay. Do not spend too much time trying to match the exact same color because it does not matter that much. We're going to be adding more layers on top of this layer anyways, so it'll be mostly covered up. And you want your layer to be thick enough that it's opaque. Um, and that there are not any transparent spots where you can just see the canvas right through it. But you don't want it to be too thick where it's just like lumps and clumps of paint on it. Somebody's at my door. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Okay, picking back up. Make sure you paint the edges of your canvas. And you want your picture to kind of follow the outline of the drawing so that it looks pretty seamless when it's hanging up. And trust me, you definitely want to paint your edges while you're actually painting your picture because if you wait till later on, you're going to be upset that you got to mix all these colors out and you're probably just going to end up not ever painting your edges. <laughs> I do that literally all the time. So make sure that you paint your edges as you go. Makes it continuous and seamless. Seamless.
finished with the outer background base coat and I'm going to clean my brother <laughs> my brother, clean my brush off in my water cup. All right, next we're going to paint our middle background. And our middle background color is purple, so get out your purple paint. Still using my medium sized brush, I am painting my middle background purple. So I think I might switch to my smaller brush as I get closer to these letters because it's, it's a tight little spot so I might need a smaller brush to get around it pretty easily. And then I'm also going to paint this little spot this little triangular area here between her body, torso, and her arm. If you feel more comfortable switching to your smaller brush for that, go for it. Use whatever works for you. So right now I'm just outlining the top and bottom of this area. Just to kind of give me a starting point and an ending point when I start painting the letters. Before I switch to my small brush, I'm also going to hit this large area in between the letters. And right now, it doesn't look all perfect and clean and amazing because, um, th again, this is just our base coat so it doesn't have to be perfect and right now use whatever brush size works for you if you're like girl i am not about to do this go around these letters with that big old brush that is 100 percent fine just use whatever works for you All right, as you can see, this is certainly not perfect by any means, but it is good enough for right now for our base coat. Now I'm cleaning my brush off. You wanna have a pretty even nice coat of your paint um, of this first base coat layer so that you don't have to put too many layers on top. Also, I realized that I left out this super teeny tiny triangle right here of background space. I'm going to paint that triangle with the background color which is just peach and brown so the next step of phase one is painting the base coat of the inner background and you might think that the inner background is turquoise that the base coat would be turquoise because if you look at the sketch it looks turquoise but actually the base coat is that light yellow color that you see around her hair so we're going to mix the yellow in our kit with white to get that light yellow color and make sure if you if your brush is dirty or has paint on it that you clean it off before you dip it in the white paint because you don't want to mix colors inside of your paint cups so I cleaned off my brush and now I'm about to scoop out some white paint for this light yellow color all right I have this nice light yellow and using my medium sized brush I'm just going to put a layer of this down. Going around the edges of her hair and going around her skin. And as you can tell, I'm not trying to make this like super perfect. And right here, I accidentally got yellow inside of where her hair is and it's okay because I'll be painting her hair later on so we'll just paint on top of that if you mess up don't stress it because this is just your base coat layer and you will be painting over it the way that I'm like going around her hair with the same brush is I just turn it different angles so if I paint with this brush flat I'm getting a big flat stroke 
but if I turn it to the side, I get a smaller, a thinner stroke. So just flip your medium sized brush on the edge when you need a thinner stroke. And then, so right here, I needed a thinner stro stroke, so I'm flipping it on its edge. But then when I wanna do a bigger area, I flip it back flat and I can paint a bigger area like this. So just practice with controlling your brush because it really makes a difference in the ease of use for your painting and prevents you from having to switch so much between your medium sized brush and your small one. I like to say please like and subscribe if you liked this video because if you like it then you'll like it. So the next step is painting the base coat of her skin. This is a time where you mix whatever base coat color you want for her skin tone. I'm using the brown that is included in the kit. I'm just gonna use this brown directly, but you use whatever color that you want to use for her skin tone. Each kit includes a brown and a peach color for the base coats for the skin. And if you want to make either of these colors lighter, you can mix white into it. And if you wanna make either of these colors darker, you can mix black into it. Also, you can mix brown into the peach to make it darker, and you can mix the peach into the brown to make it lighter. So experiment with that, figure out what color, shade, a skin you want your girl to be. You can do some mixing on your plate or your palette, but I'm going to be using the brown directly from the cup. And you know I'm brown skin, so. Mm. Brown skin girl. Doo -doo -doo. So I am um, outlining her thigh. Be sure that you are aware of where these lines are because we are gonna outline the picture at the very end. Don't paint over them too much to the point where you have no idea where they start and end. And I'm also painting my edge here. So there's a line between her thighs here. This thigh on the left is on top of this thigh on the right. We will outline that line later, but again, just be aware of it. And if you wanna see what I mean by that, this is the line. Boop, boop. This thigh is on top, this thigh is behind it. And there's a line between her two thighs. Her thick thighs, thick thighs save lives, honey. Thick thighs be saving lives. Which reminds me, if you want to change the shape of her figure, you can also do that. So remember, this entire picture was drawn in pencil. So if at any point you want to change her figure, this is your picture. Customize it however you like. And acrylic paint is easy to paint over. So if you want to change something that you've done before, um, you can easily do that. Now I'm painting here. If you're worried that if you paint over your pencil marks, you're not gonna be able to see them or remember where they are, um, you can take a pencil and before you start painting, you can just outline this line darker so that when you paint it, that line will show up better than if you didn't outline it before. Or you can also use a pencil after you paint it to kind of just mark that line. And you can do that when the paint is wet or when it's dry. It'll show up better when it's dry, but either way. Now I'm going to do her face. With every layer of this painting, you want to make sure that your layer is thick enough, that there are no see-through spots, but thin enough that it won't take forever to dry. Now I'm going to paint her lips with my small brush. And to paint her lips, I'm going to um, mix this brown with a little bit of black for her pop lip. And then use this peach color for her bottom lip. All 
right, now I'm going to paint her bodysuit. The base coat of her bodysuit, which is the peach color that I have. And remember, if you want to change her outfit, you can also do that. I just decided to give her like a cute little feminist bodysuit because that's just what I wanted to do. But you can change her outfit as well. So the last two things we have left for the base coats are her hair and the letters. I'm gonna do her hair first. I'm making her hair black. Again, this is a time where you can mix any color you want. You can um, mix a blonde, brunette, a ginger color, any hair color you prefer. I'm using a medium sized brush, but you can use a smaller sized brush for this part as well because these are little smaller spaces, so it might be easier for you. Do whatever um, makes you feel the most comfortable. Let me see how I'm flipping my brush around depending on the area that I am painting in. So if it's a bigger area, I'm painting it flat like this. And then if it's a smaller area, I'm using more so the edge of the brush. And even that, though I'm using my medium sized brush, I'll probably clean it up later on with my small brush just to make sure my edges are nice and clean and sharp and whatnot. Even though they're looking pretty good. So I'll see if I need to do it. Figure it out as you go, honey. Figure it out as you go. So one um fun thing that you can also do with acrylic paint is you can add texture with it. So if you take a big old glob of black paint and just kind of stack it on top of there, you can probably see that shine where there's now texture in her hair. So if I just take a lot of black paint and just kind of stack it on her hair, she now has textured hair, which is kind of cool. And you can do that, um, do a lot of that. However, don't do too much of it because um, if you choose to do it, don't do too much of it because we do need some black later on. I'm actually not going to do that. So I'm just taking all the excess black paint and I'm um, putting it back in my cup. But if you want to, it is a super, super cool look. I love adding texture to my paintings, typically. It just makes it pop and come alive a little bit more. If your water gets too dirty, it will start affecting the color of the paint, especially lighter colors. So if you're using like this dirty brown or blackish colored water to clean off your brushes and then dip it in this light yellow or white paint, like a light color paint color, it can, you know, kind of make it a muddier color because you got dirty water. So make sure that you are cleaning your water out every now and then. So now the last step of these base coats is the letters. I'm using the peach straight from the kit and my small size brush and I'm just quickly painting in these letters. And I am not going to spend a lot of time trying to make them look perfect because that's just not who I am. <laughs> I kind of like a messier look, like a handwritten font look, but if you want to, you can certainly spend some time to make your words look super clean and crisp, but you will have to pause the video to do it because I will not be doing it. And if at any point in general you need to pause the video to catch up, please do so. Just remember to come back to me. You see how it didn't matter too much if our purple was a little bit messy in the background because this peach color just covers it up real nice. So any mistakes are just being covered. 
and we've used so much peach we've used it in the background we've used it on her bodysuit we have used it in the letters and i still have a lot of peach left because i put brown and peach in the bigger cups the paint cup sizes in your kit will not be the same sizes because I'm going to give you more paint of the colors that you're going to need a lot of. I hate those like art kits where they give you like one drop of paint and tell you to make it work, you know, and then you end up probably having to go to the store and, you know, getting more paint on your own to finish the picture. So I'm making sure that there is enough paint in these um, kits and I'm proving that to you by using the paint in the kits. So for example, there's only a tiny, tiny bit of red in here because the there's actually no red in the picture unless you choose to make her hair an orangish color and then you can mix red and yellow together to make orange. But I only put a small dab of red in there because you wouldn't need that much red to make an orange. Yet these two colors are huge cups because I know that we're using more of that color. So it is proportionate to um, what you'll actually be needing. Feel me? I got you. I ain't skimping off of you. I will not, thou shall not skimp with the paint. And then you want your paint to be opaque and nice and thick, and you know? So I don't want y'all to have to be watering it down so much to try to make it spread and work because that would be frustrating. I would never sell a product that I wouldn't want to use. So now we're about to do phase two layers. That's when we're gonna add a couple more layers of color to our picture and do some highlights and shadows. This is also a good time to clean out your water cup because if your water is looking like mine, it's looking a little dirty. You can also refill your drinks, whatever you're sipping on, get your sip on a little bit more. Do whatever you need to do because we're about to enter phase two layers. So first step in phase two is we're gonna start adding some extra layers of color to our outer background. And if your painting looks like mine, you might have a couple spots that are a little bit more transparent. We're gonna target those areas to basically cover them up. So I'm gonna start with a light yellow, the same kind of light yellow that we use right here in our inner background. So I'm mixing yellow and white. White paint, yellow paint, and so I'm using my medium sized brush and I am just going to do some random streaks of color in my background. And I'm gonna target some of these transparent areas a little bit more, but for the most part, I'm just doing random streaks of this light yellow color. And I know some people hate the word, I know some people hate the word random, like, they're like, no, tell me exactly how many streaks to do, exactly what size, where to put them, all that stuff. But with art, you really are just kind of figuring it out as you go. And you just gotta have fun with it, do what feels right, you know? And one thing is if you dip your water, if you have like paint on your brush, and then you dip it in water a little bit to water down, you'll get a water your a more watery streak, if that makes sense. So as this one looks a little bit um, more opaque, the watered down ones can just be dabbed up real quickly because they're really watery and they kind of are a little bit more see-through. So that's just something you can experiment with if you want to, but anyways. Now I'm going to mix purple and white to get a light purple. So this is the same purple that we used in this middle background. Now I'm going to mix some purple and white to get a light purple color. And I'm gonna do the same, same thing of random streaks of color, of this purple color in my background. These streaks are making it so that we don't have to do a full second base coat layer of paint um, on that background. Even though it did have some transparent spots, these streaks are covering up those transparent spots real well. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna do to this outer background is take out peach. And I'm actually gonna mix some of this peach with white. 
And this is going to be the other color of streaks that I'm adding to the background. And this color, I'm kind of putting it on top of other streaks to kind of make them blend in a little bit so that the streaks aren't all so separated, but that they're all just kind of blending in together. And so there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm literally just adding um, streaks <laughs> to the background, for lack of a better, more detailed word. And boom, we are completely finished with our outer background. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing for the middle background. So this light yellow color that you still have on your palette or your plate, um, I'm going to add a little bit of water to it so it's not too, too opaque, but anyways. So I'm using this light yellow color and I'm adding streaks. So you can see that my streaks are a little bit see-through because I watered it down, watered that paint down a little bit. But I'm just adding it in between her arms, adding it between the letters. Just random streaks of this yellow. We're doing the same thing that we just did to the outer background. And I'm just hitting them in random spaces, truly random spaces. All right, now I'm going to this light purple that we just mixed as well and that we were using on the outer background. And now I'm doing streaks of the light purple on this area. And it's okay if your streaks overlap. It makes it look um, more uniform if they do. So random streaks of purple and these are just like up and down streaks all right lastly I'm taking some of that light peach that we just used as well and I'm adding a couple streaks of that I'm kind of running out of space for streaks so it probably won't be too many of this color And if you feel like you added too many streaks, if you look at it and you're like, okay, I streaked it up a little bit too much, you can just go back to whatever that base coat color was. So for example, in the middle background, my base coat was this purple. So just go back to the straight up purple and just cover up some of the streaks with that base coat color. And it brings um, that base coat color back up to the forefront and it covers up some of the streaks that you did. So if you're like, okay, I did too many streaks, you can just cover it up. You can either wait for your streaks to dry to cover it up or you can do it while it's still wet. Either way will work. But there you go. I just covered up some of my streaks. All right, now we're going to the inner background. So you see this phase is going by pretty quickly so far um, because we're, we're, we don't want to overthink this, you know, just have fun with it. Put streaks in spots that feel right. Don't try to like calculate. Well, if I put a streak here, then it's gonna offset. You know, just have fun with it and put them where it feels right. Get creative. You can do use different colors if you want to. You can add red somewhere if you want to. Do whatever you want, um, but don't overthink this too much. So now I'm getting turquoise and I'm doing my inner background now. So I'm going to outline this area a little bit, this circular area but I'm not outlining her hair. I want the area around her hair to stay that light yellow. That's the main reason why we use that light yellow because it looks good around her hair. But I am outlining the circular area with this turquoise color. And it's a very pretty color. This pur the purple and the turquoise are very pretty colors. But anyways, and then now I'm kind of filling it in and just doing the same kind of streak pattern. And I'm just kind of doing streaks, but not quite outlining her hair. So I'm adding turquoise, but I'm leaving the spots around her hair yellow. <laughs> So I came in a little bit on some spots and I left a lot of yellow showing. And also a fun thing is while this turquoise is still wet. So here's what I mean by I left that yellow, I left some yellow showing. While this turquoise is still wet, I can take a paper towel, I can damp it or leave it dry and just add streaks like that. 
So just basically wiping off some of that turquoise is going to bring in streaks of that yellow because that yellow is the base coat. I just add streaks and then I can clean it up with the turquoise if I want to. Add streaks and then clean it up. Or you can also add streaks by using a light yellow, the same kind of light yellow that we used in the background. So this light purple here that I've been using, I'm about to add streaks of light purple to the background. And this is the same technique that we've been using. Uh -oh. I'll clean that up later. <laughs> same technique that we've been using of streaks. I'm gonna take some of this turquoise and I'm gonna just add a streak over here. And again, if you ever do something you don't like it, you can just wipe it away. But I quite do like that. Okay, so we are halfway finished with phase two layers. Now we're gonna add some layers to her skin and to her body. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. 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 And we're also going to add another layer to the words later. So if your words are looking a little wonky, don't worry about it. We're not completely finished with that yet. Okay, so we've made the background real fun and funky and it's looking really good. The next step that I'm going to do is add layers to her skin and to her bodysuit. If you feel like this is a little bit more advanced for you or if you don't, if you're afraid that you'll mess up her skin or if you just like it the way it is, that's completely fine. You don't have to do this step, but I'm going to add some highlights and shadows to her skin and to her bodysuit. Um, just to kind of add some depth and interest to it. Again, if you want to keep it just with the base coat layer, that's completely fine. You can just add a second coat of that exact same color just to make it look um, more opaque and cover up any transparent spots. But what I'm going to do is add a couple highlights and shadows, okay? And I'm gonna break it down and move slowly so that you guys are following what I'm doing. So first, I'm going to do her skin. So I'm going back to this brown that I used initially. First, I'm going to do the shadows. So I'm gonna take this brown, put some on my palette right here. And this is what I use for her skin tone. You're gonna to use whatever you use for her base coat. This brown was her base coat color. If a peach color was your base coat color, then you're gonna take some peach out. Now, I'm gonna add some black to it to make it darker. If you use peach as your base tone, you can add brown to it to make it darker, or you can add black to it to make it darker. Um, do whichever one you prefer. You can do both of them and see which color you like more. But I'm gonna add black to this brown to make it a dark brown. Now I'm gonna take this brush. I'm having, I have a medium sized brush in my hand right now. And I'm going to make a streak on the inside edge of her arm, like that. I made a line on the inside edge of her arm. Then I'm gonna continue this so it is tracing her thigh, basically outlining her thigh. All right, I'm gonna take this dark brown and I'm also going to do it up here to the side of this strap because this is behind this part of her body. So this kind of just indicates that it's a shadow. All right. And if you want to get fancy with it, you can dip your small brush in water. So this is a clean brush I just dipped in water. And if you want to blend it in, you can just use that water to blend it in a little bit. Don't have to do that, but that is, um, something that you can do to blend. So anyways, I'm going back to this dark brown color and now I'm going to the opposite arm. I'm doing the same thing. This inside edge on the left, I'm just outlining it with this dark brown. And then I'm going, going down. So now I'm going to her neck and on the left side I'm going to outline this left side a little bit with this dark brown 
And then I'm gonna draw the line underneath her chin so that her neck is, looks like it's in shadows. So I just did a scoop around the left side and then outline underneath her chin. Then I'm gonna bring it out just a little bit so that it blends a little bit. And if you want, you can um, draw a little part of where her cleavage is, but we're gonna actually outline that later, so you don't have to do that at all. Okay. Still taking this dark brown. Since the left thigh is in front of this thigh, I'm going to outline that left thigh on this side with a shadow. And I'm also gonna bring that up here. So I'm outlining this left side with my shadow and if your colors are too harsh just dip your brush in water and then you can blend it with the water okay and now we're done with the shadows boom 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 now we're going to do the highlights so take this brown take whatever your base coat is and now add white to it the same way that we just added black or dark brown to our base coat to make it a darker color, now we're adding white to our base coat to make it a lighter color. So I am just taking my base coat, which is brown, and I am adding white to it. Okay? And now I'm taking this lighter brown, and starting with her arm like we did before, I am outlining the outer edge of her arm. And again, when it's to um, bold, you can just dip your brush, your other brush in water and blend it in. I'll show you another blending technique on this arm. So we're gonna do the same thing here where we take this lighter brown and we're outlining it on the outside, down here. And another way you can blend it is take your other brush and dip it in your base coat. So I'm just dipping it straight in my brown and then just go along the edge of that color you just added and just kind of blend it in like that. So this way it doesn't actually use water, it just uses more paint. All right, so now I'm using my light brown again and I'm going to the right side of her neck. We did the left side as a shadow, so I'm going to the right side of her neck and doing a highlight, and I'm bringing it down the same way we did the left side. I'm also gonna put a highlight on her cleavage, like that, like underneath the little triangle. So I did a highlight here, here, and then here, here. And here's that technique again I just told you about where I'm taking my base coat color and I'm just blending it in. You can also do this with water. Now I just dipped it in water, blending it in. See how that works? Still using my lighter color. I'm gonna do a streak underneath her face. And then I'm gonna do it on the side of her face as well. Now I'm using this small brush, which is the base coat color, just to fill in some spots because her face had a couple transparent spots there. So now on her thighs. So now using my lighter brown, I'm going to the outside left side of her thigh, making a line. And then since this thigh is in front, I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side. Right? And then I'm also going to do this highlight on the right side of her other thigh. And since those that looks pretty harsh, like it sticks out too much, I'm gonna clean this brush off. Cleaning this brush off in my water. I'm dipping it in my brown, which is my base coat, and I'm just blending it in from the middle. Blending it in from the middle. I 
Remember you can do the same thing blending with water. Now I just clean my brush off and I'm just blending it with straight up water. No paint is on my brush right now. And we are now done with the highlights and the shadows on her skin. So now we're about to do the highlights and the shadows onto her bodysuit. Her bodysuit is peach. So now I'm taking this peach out, mixing some peach with brown to make a darker peach, just a little bit of brown to make it a darker peach. And then I'm going to put this color here, underneath her breast, here on the outside edge of her hip, here on the outside edge of this hip. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit, and then I'm gonna put it here at the bottom of her bodysuit. And then I'm going to connect it through here. I did it a little bit too much at the bottom. I'm going to erase some of it. All right. So now I'm taking peach and mixing it with white to make a lighter peach. And if her skin tone was peach and you use brown for your bathing suit, then you'll be using brown for this part. So now I'm mixing peach and white to make a lighter peach. And I'm going to put this lighter peach color on here. Here, 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 and I'm going to outline her breast with it, outline her breast with it, I want to put it on the straps. Now I'm cleaning off my brush and water, and I have a clean brush, so I'm just using water to blend all this in a little bit. Just using water to blend all of that in. And if the water didn't blend it in well, you can always go back in with that original base coat to blend it, remember? You can also just go in with the peach or your brown or whatever your base coat is to blend it in like that. And now we're done with that. The last step of phase two layers is adding another layer to the letters. So I'm about to use the same color that I mixed, which is the peach and the white. I'm just going to redraw these letters. So you're gonna see a little bit of that peach layer through it. So I'm just drawing my letters again. Again, I kinda of like the messy look, so I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm not trying to put it exactly on top of the first layer because I like for that first layer to peek through a little bit. Do whatever style you prefer. You can make them look real nice and crisp. I'm going to do it like this. So at the end of phase two, this is what my picture looks like. Those layers truly made a difference, didn't they? So we just finished phase two and before we get into phase three I just want to say I put the word strong as hell on this picture because that is what being a woman means to me. You can also do different words if you want to. This is just what spoke to me because when I think about things I've been through in my life as a woman I think wow sunshine girl you are strong as hell. Um, there's some things that I've been through that are 
like, wow, how did you get through that? How did you overcome that? How did you not let that completely break you or tear you down? And the answer is because I'm strong as hell. And we as women, we are strong as hell. And life is not a measure of how many times it knocks you down, how many times like crap comes in the way that just really hurts you or messes you up or thinks that it breaks you like life is a measure of how many times you get back up life is a measure of how you deal with those things that are thrown your way how you deal with those curveballs how you deal with those rude people racist people hurtful people sexist people life is a measure of how you deal with it and how you get back up and how you thrive and um a constant reminder is that you are strong as hell and that's how you deal with it that is your superpower you are strong you are kind you are beautiful do not let the world tell you who you are and this doesn't just have to be for a woman this can be for women this can be for men this can be for anybody who identifies as anything outside of those boxes like if this piece touched you if this painting touched you and you saw it and you just felt a connection to it or if you felt empowered by it or encouraged by it that is my ultimate and only goal with these pictures and these paintings is to um, bring some positivity and encouragement in, in anybody's lives and if you felt connected to this piece maybe you needed to hear this that you are indeed strong as hell and you are bigger and better than any demons that you're battling any issues that you're facing any obstacles that are in your path you are bigger and you are better than them and you are strong and you will overcome and you will not let life take away your joy or your softness my mom always told me what god gives no man or no person can take away so god gives me the joy that's inside of me and i'm strong as hell and i'm not letting anybody take it so i hope that this piece resonates with you guys and i love you whoever is watching this i know you didn't sign up for a ted talk so i'm gonna get back to painting so now for phase three. Phase three is my favorite phase. Um, it's when we do details. Phase three is details. The details are what really makes the picture pop. So in this phase, we're going to be outlining our woman and we're also going to be, you know, this is when you can add any extra fun thing that you want. If you want to give her earrings, if you want to give her a bracelet, like whatever you want to do, this is the time to do it at the end. And then at the very, 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 very end, we're going to sign our names sign your name on this picture because you worked hard on this picture and did I paint my edges girl I had to make sure I painted my edges but you know I can't really leave the house without my edges she can't leave the house okay also and then you <laughs> and you have to sign your name on this picture because you always need to put your name on whatever work of art you create because you worked hard to create it and you want to hang it up with pride and um, the number one way to show pride in your artwork is to put your name on that thing. Put your name on that thing. Put your name on that thing. So we are going to do that. Um, but first, <laughs> before then, we're going to start with outlines. So let's get started. So phase three is the details. So that means I'm going to outline her and her outfit. And if you mess up, it is easy to fix it by just covering up your mess up with whatever color is behind it, whatever color it should be. And I'm using my small brush dipped in black paint. And also make sure that you have a good, um, that your brush doesn't have any stray bristles. Cause if you have a stray bristle hanging out during this part, it will like mess your painting up. So for example, 
I don't know if you guys can see that one little hair right there. You see that one little hair at the end? <laughs> Y'all see that one little teeny tiny, teeny tiny, teeny tiny, teeny tiny hair at the tip of my brush? It's kind of messing me up a little bit because it's dragging paint where I don't want paint to be. So I'm literally just going to pluck it off. And if I can't pluck it off, I'm just gonna get a pair of scissors and cut it. And that tiny little strand is really bugging me. So I'm just gonna cut it off. Just cut it off. Okay. Something like that very understandably might not bother you, <laughs> but it was bothering me, so I dealt with it. If it takes away from my peace, it's got to go. <laughs> Gotta keep that mindset for anything. If you taking away from my peace, I'm gonna cut you off just like I cut off that little strand of hair. Mm. Comment below something you had to cut off this year because it was taken away from your piece. And if you can't think of anything, you might got some trimming that you need to do. This is always something that needs to be cut off every now and then. It's like spring cleaning. You gotta spring clean your relationships. You gotta spring clean your friendships. Spring clean toxic habits all that every now and then you just need to throw some stuff out cut some stuff off throw some stuff away because it makes you better if it's not contributing to your overall peace then tell me why do you need it the answer is you don't so i did the little outline of her of the bottom of her bathing suit her thighs for her um, bodysuit I kind of cut in a little bit right here and here just to give her a little of her waist if there is a person in your life making you feel not good about yourself cut them off if it's a person that makes you feel not beautiful cut them off there's a person that makes you feel not worthy of the love and attention and affection that you deserve, cut them off and surround yourself with people that pour life and love and joy into you. All right, so now I'm gonna do her cleavage <laughs> while I'm ranting or whatever you wanna call it. And now I'm going to clean this up a little bit because some of these lines are a little bit raggedy, as you can probably see. Let's see. Some of these lines, some of these lines are a little bit raggedy, like there, like there. So I'm going to clean up some of these lines a little bit. So this is what it's looking like so far. I'm gonna clean up any white spots I see, any raggedy edges like there that I'm seeing. Little spots there. Just going to clean it up a little bit, but this is what it is currently looking like. The background is looking amazing words are looking cool you see that double layer that I was talking about how you can see in like a spot like that I'm gonna clean up as well how you can see the layers underneath it all looking pretty cool if you ask me so I mixed a brown and white for this edge of her arm because remember we used um, the highlight of the brown and white there. So I'm just coming back in alongside that line, the black line that I made to clean it up. 
I'm also gonna use some water to blend it back in like we were doing earlier. So now that line is a lot more smooth. So that's part of what you wanna do with um, this phase three, the details, is clean up any mistakes as well. While I'm cleaning up any mistakes I have, I'm also going to say that, um, be sure to remember that you do not have to be strong. If you are going through something in life, do not let the world tell you that you just need to be strong and take it. Like, yes, I believe that you are strong and I believe that we are conquerors and we can, um, and that we have overcome so much and that is true and valid. But at the same time, what is also true and valid is that sometimes things are just truly hard and you need help and you need somebody to talk to you. You need somebody to lean on. So don't let the world or don't let society or don't let your family or your friends or anybody that you reach out to tell you that, oh, you going, you say you're going through something. Well, you're strong. You got it. Or, hey, you're resilient. Like, you know, don't let people use these little cute little phrases, which again are true because I just gave a whole little TED talk about it. So clearly I do believe that we are very strong people, but you do not always have to be strong by yourself. Get help when you feel like you need it. If you feel like there's too much on your shoulders, that you are in pain, that you are crying out for help, and people are just telling you to be strong and deal with it, talk to someone else. Make sure that you don't use the strong as hell narrative or the women are strong and can take it as a reason to not A, get the help that you need when you're going through something or B, report issues if they happen. For example, if something, if somebody does something to you that is not okay, but you feel like, hey, I'm a woman, I'm supposed, I'm supposed to just take it. Or if you're in the job place and someone does something inappropriate to you and you say, well, hey, I'm strong. I don't have to report it. It doesn't bother me. Make sure you don't use the narrative that you're supposed to be strong and ignore serious issues. So now I'm about to sign this picture and I'm about to sign it using my brown paint and my small brush. And I'm just gonna put my initials right here. I've been about to I'm actually going over my signature with white just so that it doesn't pop out quite as much just so it kind of blends in with the background a little bit more that brown made it kind of bold which isn't bad but i think i want it to be a little bit more subtle So we are finished. I really hope you guys enjoyed painting with me. I hope that you're, I know 
that your paintings turned out amazing. I really can't wait to see it. Please, 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 please post your pictures on Instagram and tag at artxsun so that I can see them. That's A-R-T-X-S-U-N. Um, you can also DM them to me on Instagram or email them to me at info at artxsun. Um, I just really am truly excited to see your works of art because I know they're going to be amazing. And I also just want to know how this painting went for you. Also, thank you so much if you bought a kit. I'm just excited to be launching this collection. I've been wanting to do it for a while now and I'm excited that it's finally out there. Um, and give me some constructive feedback like how how did the video tutorial work for you? How did the kit work for you? Um, what needs to be improved? What went well? Was this tutorial helpful? Was it awesome? You know, was it the best thing you've ever seen in your life? Tell me that. That just helps me create a better experience for you guys. Check out my website at artxsun.com to see other paint and sip kits and um, my personal works of art that are on there. And also follow me on Instagram if you're interested in joining one of my live paint and sip sessions where um, I just tell people to get a bunch of paint and supplies. Let's go. We've got to paint together and I go live on Instagram and we paint a picture and I teach you how to do it. And we're also just talking and communing together and just having a great time. This piece means a lot to me and I, I really hope that it resonates with you as well. I hope that you can hang it on your wall and every day you can look at it and you can say that I am strong as hell. I'm gonna conquer this day. I'm gonna conquer this month. I'm gonna conquer this year. And um, do not let anybody tell you that you are not strong, resilient, worthy of all of your love and all of the flowers in the world, that you are not amazing the way that God made you. So just, I hope this piece means a lot to you guys and i hope it encourages you and i hope it helps you get through your days so and lastly if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe um it means the world to me and it also just helps me out and helps me uh, continue to create content for you guys so comment below what this picture means to you and comment how the painting went how did your painting turn out uh, i love you guys talk to you soon have a blessed and wonderful day